Hey everybody, so here's another book report. I've covered Cinefex before, but there are two particular issues that I want to cover in depth because these are really uh, pretty much singular. This is issue number one from March 1980, and of course it covers uh, obviously the motion picture, and there's also some Alien as well. So I want to cover, I want to uh, concentrate on the motion picture here because there are some really unique photos going on, and hopefully I can get them without too much uh, specularity hits off the uh, pages here. So, you can't really get these for, well in mint condition these sell for like ninety, hundred fifty dollars somewhere in there. This one's a little beat up but it's still in pretty fair condition. I actually got it for about thirty dollars off of eBay. And some of these photos are just so great that really I just had to uh, show them off. Taking pictures of all these would just take forever. So I figured why not just cover it all in a video. There's a good shot right there. The inner warp nacelles are purple. Or UV or whatever you want to call it. But they are not blue. In a lot of these shots there's the guy aiming the dental mirrors there. Uh, let's see if we can get a name on him David Gold he was a gaffer on the movie and there's some really old technology just reading through this it really amazed me how things are done I'm working in film right now and the tonight the techniques that we use today are just nothing like what was going on back then like this is a good example of what's called an alpha mat where you create a black and white image of the uh, subject and then you can use that to pull it out of the background and there's a good example of bad alpha hits basically so that entire ship would have to be rotoscoped black and it was just really difficult to back do back then but they did it there's a motion control camera getting programmed right there and another shot of the purple engines definitely engineering green on the pylon there can't tell you what the other colors are though it's not really that detailed regular one was uh... do they give a size here? no they're just talking about shooting the frames on it some of these were done at half a minute per frame for the exposure so it's definitely really significant and the effort that went into this film reading over it is just really phenomenal i had no idea that it was so difficult to get it done and how many production problems really plagued this overall. So this is a really good read and I uh, wish I could really share it with y'all and obviously that's not really feasible and you know, at a hundred dollars for this issue you know if you find it in mint condition obviously it's really difficult to uh, for everybody to read as well. However Cinefex if you go to their site Cinefex.com they do have black and white Xeroxes of this article. I imagine the photos coming here, but being black and white Xeroxes, that doesn't really uh, help you out at all. But you can read about what was going on, and it's really great insight, not only into the era, but also into how they got things done. For example, I think this is the dialogue here. V'ger was 8 feet in diameter, 22 feet long, made out of plywood, plexiglass, fiberglass, basically everything they could use to find it. There's something like 20 miles of uh, fiber optics in it alone, and it's just really astounding stuff. So I don't want to take up, well we're only at 4 minutes here, so that's not too bad I guess. And if you're really interested in some of these photos, then hopefully you can stick around. The tricks they used on some of the visual effects here really surprised me, like uh, the V'ger sparkling here, that's all two-dimensional art projected onto the 3D set. Then the way they shot the Enterprise in this one was just to do like half a minute or a full minute exposures and then move the camera as they exposed. The uh, wormhole here was done with uh, laser scanning, but I forget exactly what they scanned, it wasn't smoke. Uh, let's see if we can pick it up real quick. 
No, it does say in there, but uh, I just can't read that fast, I guess. And again, this was done with uh, long exposures moving the camera, and then they just tweaked out the colors to get the streaking effect. And then we're into Alien. But, since we're talking Star Trek, at the back of issue number two, they pick up with some more shots. So let me flip to that real quick. There's an article about Greg Jinn, the model maker. And uh, just as a side note, that's the set of 1941. It was huge. They used an entire soundstage studio. The Ferris wheel was 12 feet tall. And they got that rolling down the walkway, the uh, pier there. It's really phenomenal stuff. It's really good for history if you're into that sort of thing. And here we go. So this just concentrates on the Klingons mainly and how they did that. So the ship was definitely a good size. I didn't really have any reference to it before. And they shot it basically the standard old way in front of a blue screen. But back then, just because you had a blue screen did not make any everything easy. And not that blue screen is real easy nowadays, but... It is a lot more, uh, uh, well, easy to, uh, get the work done with. It's just not the entire solution. There's a lot more work to go. Like one of the ways they got the laser scanning here was, uh, or the electricity field was first they did a laser pass that ran down the length and then they actually coated the model with aluminum foil and shot that with uh, I think it was some Tesla coils and got some electricity arcing all over the foil then they just superimposed that over the actual model and they did the same thing for a regular one or Epsilon 9 or whichever it was and here they're saying that the transporter effect was just done with some glitter and the uh, actual transporter beam was done by laser scanning or uh, shooting a laser beam along some rotating wire so I'm gonna have to watch that again and see if I can really pick that up Epsilon 9 was like uh, six feet or so long there's a good shot of it right there just the amount of effort they put probably like two years worth of work into about six months worth of production these guys really busted their asses to get this movie done and uh... John Dykstra here at the end says that he was a little disappointed with the way it came out because he just wished they had more time and that's really the way it goes with all the movies is you either run out of time or money and that's when it's finished basically. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it. There's the last pages there with V'ger. So if you got a few bucks, if you ever see these on eBay definitely take a look for them. I'm going to cover uh, the Empire here in the next video installment. So the further back you go, the more technical they got in all their write-ups. Nowadays, uh, things have definitely changed. They're just more about interviews and getting general overall stuff. And as you saw, this was chock full of pictures. And nowadays, it's not quite so many photos, but a lot more in-depth articles. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Take care. Thanks for watching. See ya.